It is my pleasure to introduce our 2016 Honors Convocation speaker. Dr. Cindy Burnett is an assistant professor at the International Center for Studies and Creativity, where she is devoted to empowering educators to develop engaging lessons for students of all ages. She's been published in numerous journals, magazines, and book collections, has presented at creativity conferences throughout the world, and is a recipient of numerous awards in the field of creativity. Dr. Burnett is a self-dubbed idea doula, helping bring to life big ideas that need some support in order to be realized. With over 120,000 Twitter followers, she enjoys sharing the latest creativity research and connecting with people via social media. Dr. Burnett is a firm believer that play should be the highest form of research and spends much of her spare time performing this type of research with her six and seven-year-old children. She also brings this enthusiasm for educating the young in creative thinking to her work as a board member who runs the educational task force for the Elmwood Franklin School. Should you ever visit the Creative Studies Department in Chase Hall, you are likely to see Dr. Burnett singing and dancing down the hallway or attempting to lead her faculty colleagues in a spontaneous dance party. A little known fact is that she keeps a Supergirl costume in her closet <laughs> in case it is ever needed to inspire students. I am pleased to welcome Supergirl, I, I mean Dr. Cindy Burnett, <laughs> as the 2016 Honors Convocation Speaker. Welcome, President Conway Turner, Provost Perot, deans, faculty, staff, guests, and most importantly, student honorees. Congratulations on your incredible accomplishments. You have worked hard to achieve academic excellence. Take a deep breath and savor the moment. Do it with me. You have earned a break. OK, break is over. As, as much as you probably want to, now is not the time to kick back and relax. This is the perfect time to explore all of your potential. The one thing we know about the future is that it is probably not going to go the way we think it will. As John Lennon said, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. I'd like to give you an example. When I was a child, I loved to dance. I would dance to the sound of the washing machine or when there was music playing in the background of a store. Fortunately, my mother saw this passion in me early on and enrolled me in dance class. As I grew up, I would sing and dance for anyone who would watch. In fact, I would even go to the bus stop early to perform for the people driving by. <laughs> Although I had four siblings, my imaginary brothers and sisters were the Von Trepp family singers <laughs> from The Sound of Music. I spent long evenings in the dance studio and summers practicing my passion. I had deep intrinsic motivation that drove me to work harder and harder every day. When it came time for college, I knew I wanted to be an actor and enrolled in a BFA program in musical theater. For four years, I went from 6 a.m. to midnight doing what I loved most. I studied, I worked hard like all of you, and I enjoyed every moment. I knew college was preparing me for my future career in acting, and I was prepared to do anything I needed to do to achieve my dream. And then I graduated, and I came to a crossroads. Should I move to New York City, a place where I had never even been before, believe it or not, but could make all my dreams come true? Or should I play it safe and stay home and do something more practical? Fortunately, the decision was made for me when my best friend called me and asked if I wanted to move to Queens with her. Automatically, the word that came out of my mouth was, yes. Not surprisingly, my parents had some concerns, but in my heart, I knew I needed to give my dream a fair chance. Audition followed audition until one day I received the big call. I had landed my first part with a national Broadway tour, and rehearsals would begin a week later. For a month, I was living my dream, and it was all that I had imagined. Dance classes on Broadway, rehearsals with famous actors, and dinners with cool, hip, professional people. But being on tour was not what I expected. I spent a lot of time sleeping on a bus, eating fast food, and doing the same show over and over. For me, it was the furthest thing from my dream of a creative, always changing career. I had achieved my goal only to discover it wasn't what I wanted. Six months and 89 cities later, 
I returned home to Buffalo and had to admit to myself that I did not want to be an actor anymore. All of my dreams had vaporized and I fell into a horrible state of depression. I was not prepared for this level of despair and disappointment in my life. After all, up until this point, things had gone very well for me. I spent several months unable to get out of bed, wondering what I should be doing with my life. I had a very hard time letting go of what had been my dream since I was a little girl, especially given I had no idea what I was going to do next. One day, an old voice teacher, Karen Whelan, called me and asked me to go for lunch. As we sat there, I cried and I cried to her. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Her response was life-changing. She said, stop asking, what are you going to do? Ask, what do you want to learn about? Well, this was a new thought for me. I had stopped thinking about learning. I was out of college. I was focused on doing and being. But I took her question seriously. And as I thought about performing, I realized that the thing I loved the most was creativity. Without really thinking about it, I blurted out, I would love to learn about creativity. I've always been fascinated by the creative process. And Karen said, quite simply, so why don't you go learn about that? I have to admit that there was a certain amount of wincing from my parents when I told them about my conversation. It seemed as though I was swapping one impractical career for another. But I was invigorated by this revelation. I decided not to focus on the career title and instead focus on the learning. A few days later, through a series of serendipitous events, I found myself sitting in my first graduate course at the world-renowned International Center for Studies in Creativity here at Buffalo State. I can still vividly recall how empowered I felt my first day in Roger Firestein's creative problem-solving course. I went from not knowing what to do with my life to generating hundreds of possible things I could do with my life. The skills I learned in the Creative Studies program helped me realize that the world is changing, and I am changing. And the way we can navigate this change is through creative thinking. And without wishing to sound too much like a Hallmark card, I can honestly say that in learning about creativity, I found my greatest passion, being a teacher of creative thinking and helping others to ignite these innate abilities. Additional perks? Through learning about my field, I found the love of my life and my greatest friends and colleagues. So, what might you learn from all this? There are two key points I would like to emphasize. The first is to let go. When I am teaching undergrad students, I read their personal reflections that often read something like this. When I'm 25, I want to be married, thinking about children, working in my dream job, and living in my first house. However, for the vast majority of people, reality will not match this vision. This doesn't mean that the reality is undesirable, but it is different. And while these visions are incredibly useful, and I highly encourage them, sometimes you need to loosen the reins of the timeline, of the ideal state, of what we believe will be most ideal for you, and allow space and openness for other things to occur. What happens when you don't find an ideal job right away, or the love of your life isn't due to arrive until your late 30s? As you can imagine, these expectations will lead to disappointment as you think about what should be happening in your life after graduation. Instead, what if you held on to those big, beautiful, audacious goals, but let go of the timeline? Let go of wishing for the artificial Instagram photos or the idealist Facebook posts we see of our friends and focus on living your own authentic life. A life that focuses on your strengths and unique gifts that only you offer to the world. Acknowledge the things you don't do well and decide if you want to put in the effort to learn more to enhance those skills. Which leads us to the second lesson, learn. When you get stuck in any area of your life, Think about what you want to learn about. Of course, we would always welcome you back here at Buffalo State for graduate school. But learning doesn't have to be formal. The use of technology, we can now learn about anything, anytime, and anywhere. Platforms like Coursera and edX allow us to learn skills in the comfort of our pajamas for no cost at all. Last week, my husband learned how to make an omelet from a YouTube video, and my six-year-old son learned about the digestive system from an app. But you don't even need to look toward technology. 
This semester, if you come into my 205 class, my undergraduate students are teaching me how to step dance. And although they often laugh at me, I have to say, I'm getting pretty good. So the world is a limitless place to learn new things. The point is, you will get stuck at some point in your life, and we all do. Don't be afraid to dream big, but keep open to other opportunities. Let go of your ideal timeline, embrace your curiosity, and continue to learn. You never know where you'll end up. Thank you.